that. Okay, that's nice. We'll wait for one second. I think that is everyone here. So I just want to welcome everyone to the webinar for CAPTO and PGA virtual seminar. What we're going to do in this presentation is just cover some of the basics. And my name is Brian Pate, working with CAPTO here in the United States. So if you do have any questions, you can reach out to us through email, which we'll show you at the end of the seminar, or on Instagram as well, CAPTO USA on Instagram. If you have any questions at the end, we'll go ahead and cover that. But I just want to click through, talk about the CAPTO data, the overview, what you see in the program. We'll talk about some 3D patterns that the program shows, and then some ideas with coaching with CAPTO, because it's all about how you can use it with your students to help your students get better in their putting game. As we first click here and go through our first slide, just kind of connecting the unit. First, you want to make sure it's connected to your system through the Wi-Fi. Then you can go ahead and log into the app. And if you click the connect button, what we'll see is it will start trying to connect to your system. Once it's connected, you'll get the OK check mark. And then your screen will turn from red to green. And then you're ready to use the unit to set it up to your system. Let me just admit all, there we go. More showing up, perfect. So once you're in there and connected, you have some options on the main screen. You can select players. If we click on the player button, first off what we'll do is we'll put in our player's name. This is gonna create a file unique to that person. So whatever you name that, it's gonna give you a confirmation page from there, you can go ahead and change the name or you can confirm the name. Once you confirm the name, it's gonna take you to the next slide. Here you can enter a picture of your student. If you wanna take a headshot, put them in there so you can remember who's coming up next time. You can select them as the current student. You can change where they come from. You can change their skill level. And you can also select if they're a male and if they're right-handed and left-handed. Once you're done with that, you wanna go ahead and click the save button. You can also log back in and there's a little trash can on the bottom left. If you want to go ahead and delete that player, you can as well. Once we create the player, now it's gonna take us back to the player selection and you can click refresh if that player is not showing up. It also gives you the option to click down the drop down list and select a player that's already in there. So the next option is selecting the putter, same route. So we're gonna go ahead and put in the putter's name, go ahead and click create. Here I just have a test putter and you can see right next to the ID name, there's a star, so it creates a unique putter name. So whatever you make for that putter, that's gonna store in the system for what it is. You can put in the brand, you can put in the model, and you can go ahead and upload an image if you wanna add an image as well, just so you can see what it is. Some options, you can select a blade or a mallet, you can select the head weight, and if it's left-handed or an arm lock. And on the very bottom, you can set as current, save it or you can remove that as well. The next screen, once you click next, we can go ahead and set up the putter itself. What we have here is, let me go ahead and click on the image right below the shaft axis offset. And now Capto has a great new option where you can go ahead and upload an image Go ahead and put your putter right next to a golf ball and you'll scale the golf ball 
so it fits in that circle. Once you scale it, you're gonna go ahead and align the golf club shaft with the lines. And then from there, it's gonna give us a slide bar where we can go ahead and slide the white line until it runs into the putter face. And it's gonna go ahead and give us our millimeter offset. So now we don't have to try to guess anymore. So it's gonna make it a lot easier. And again, for the access for the sweet spot, you can go ahead and take a picture of your putter with the ball next to it, scale the golf ball. Once you get that scaled, now you can go ahead and align the picture. So the shaft matches the three vertical lines. And then you're gonna go ahead and scroll over the measurement to the sweet spot. And that's gonna give you the offset of the, for this putter was 17 millimeters. And then once you're all set up, you can go ahead and click current, save. And in the top right, you can click the little X and it'll get back to your main screen. Or now you can go ahead and click play and you're ready to go. So right when you get into the play, it just wants to confirm that you have the sensor set up on the right distance and that also the sensor is 90 degrees to the face. You can go ahead and click those buttons and it'll say you're ready to play. And then what I wanted to do is go ahead and go through the app. Let me go ahead and pull that up here for you. Make sure everyone's in. And we'll take a look at some of the tiles. Perfect. So what you can see is I just launched the program. It's giving me a red box. So the unit's not connected to it at this moment, just because I'm on Wi-Fi for the presentation. If I click on players, here are my options of what I have already set up in here. So I'm gonna say test player. That's my current. I'm gonna go to the home screen. I'm gonna click on putter. I have three putters in here. I can click on the test putter. It's already set for current. And then from there, I already got the putter set and the player set. So I'm gonna go ahead and click play. And that's gonna take us to our main screen right here. So what I did was I hit 10 putts down below, which is gonna give us some data. And I just wanna walk through the screen of what we are seeing right here. So in the top left corner, if we click on that, it's gonna be our menu options. So we can go back to the home, which is gonna take us back to the main screen. If we click on play again, it'll get us back to our tiles. We can go back to the player option. We can go back to putters. We can go click play. So it's an easy navigation to jump around the program. And down at the bottom is your settings, which you can click in here. It's gonna give you some options, how you wanna see the data. If you wanna see it in numerical or imperial, you can change a bunch of options in here. So easy to get in and out of. Now, if we go back to our main screen, what we'll see on the bottom left is I'm gonna go to our first stroke. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click back on the very bottom where it says player, because I clicked out and back in. I'm gonna go ahead and select the test player, click select, and that's gonna take us back to our 10 strokes. So in our first pot right here, on the bottom left, there's a note option. So if I click on the notes, I can type in here whatever I wanna type. Maybe it's a stock putt and it's 10 feet away. So you can go ahead and add the notes in here. So if you wanna go back in, you can look it up, see what it was. If it was a good putt, you can go ahead and start it as your favorite. And then also the work session, if I wanted to add a new one, I could call this, let's just say five putts from 10 feet straight. Let's put from 10 feet. So now it's going to, any putt I hit after this is gonna link it with this session. So you can go back, take a look of what the player did as we start getting into our putts. So if I click on the first tile or face tile, it's gonna go ahead and open up a graph. On the bottom right, we can see there's three dots. If I click on the three dots, that's gonna take us to all of our previous 
putts. I can go ahead and click back. The arrows on the bottom, the arrow with the line on the left, that'll take us to our first putt of the session. And if I click on the arrow with the left, sorry, the right line, that'll take us to putt number 10 out of the session. So that's a way to jump from the beginning to the end. The little arrows in the middle, those are going to be each stroke, you can click through one at a time. So there's stroke two, three, four, and I'll go back to stroke two right here. And just looking at the options here, the top left on all the tiles, there's always the information button. So you can go ahead and click in there, see what the tile is, how it's calculated. The next one is going to be your putter with an arrow next to it. That's gonna be the ideal for say a robot making the putting stroke, just to give you a reference line of what the putter just did. So the ideal is the green. If I remove it, it's just the putt that I went ahead and made. So if we start looking at the left side of the line, starting at zero, so cap the measures from zero, wherever the putter starts on the aim is gonna be the zero mark for every putt. It's gonna go ahead and it's backstroke, it's gonna go up, so it's going positive. That's going away from the golf ball and that face is gonna be opening as it goes up the graph. As we get to the yellow line, that's the inversion or the backstroke. That's where the putter stops on the backstroke and starts to go forwards. So you can see if I keep scrolling through here, the putter, the arc is still continuing to go upwards. So it's actually still opening slightly in the transition. And then it's starting to go downward. So now the face is starting to close. And if you look at the putter on the bottom, the icon, that green and blue arrow is moving as I scroll through the bar. And if I click on impact, now what it's gonna give us at the top, it's gonna to say address zero degrees, inversion, where that putter went back and stopped, plus 5.3 degrees, so that putter opened in the backstroke, and then impact, what it did at impact. This one actually came back 0.5 degrees closed from where it started. On here, shape ball. I'll give a number here just right above it 0.87 relative to the robot stroke. If I unclick, it'll go away. Ideal time, we can go ahead and set up. If you have an ideal time for your player, you can go ahead and put in there what you want them to be, and it's going to give you some markings where they should be at relative to where you want your player to be or the actual of what's going on. Next option is our green arrows on the top, left and right. If I click the green arrow, it's gonna take us to our next tile of loft. The white minus sign, if I click that, it's gonna take us back to our main screen. So I'm just gonna click through these, just show some quick little options that are in each one of these. The loft, zero, again, it's gonna start at zero. Information's at the very top. If a player makes a putting stroke and it comes off the graph or you wanna zoom in, there's a little pencil right here that I can go ahead and change the value. Let's just call it 15. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna go ahead and blow up the curve. So you can see it a little bit better. If it's out of the screen, we can go ahead and click that little pencil and type in a bigger value. Now it will shrink the curve. So again, our ideal is up on the top left. And if we look at this stroke right here, it starts at zero in the takeaway, it's going away from the golf ball and that putter's de-lofting on the backstroke at the inversion. It's gonna reach about the most de-loft. So there it's minus 10.3 degrees in the inversion and that putter's gonna go ahead and work its way back towards impact where at impact, it returned 0.5 degrees with more loft. If I click the putter back on, what we'll see 
is there's the putter motion, which is great to show students kind of what happened relative to the motion that they just made or the ideal motion that CAPTO has for that stroke. Next one is the lie angle. We start at the beginning, address 0.5 degrees from the lie that I entered for the putter. As we scroll through, it's gonna go ahead and give us a visual on the bottom plus the visual of the lines as I scroll through here. So what you can see is in the backstroke, the toe is going down, or sorry, the curve is going down, but the toe is going upwards. And then somewhere around inversion, it starts to go a little bit more toe down as it starts to coming back into impact. And at impact, now I'm 0.1 degrees different than our dynamic motion. On the bottom right, there's dynamic and there's change. If I go ahead and click change, that's gonna move everything from where the putter started to make that the zero mark. If I move it back to dynamic, that's gonna put the number I put in for the lie angle for the putter as the zero mark, and it's gonna give me the change off of that. So that's dynamic versus change for what the putter did in the motion. Next tile we're gonna click on is the angles. This takes all three angles of the face, the loft, and the lie, and just puts all the graphs on one graph so you can see them together. Differences from ideal, if I click this button, what it's gonna do is it's gonna shrink them down and show us the differences from the ideal stroke that Capto calculated for that putt and show us how off it was relative to the true pendulum motion that the putter would make relative to a robot motion. So again, if I click the little white minus sign, it'll take us back to the home screen. If I click on track, it's gonna take us to our track and then our buttons. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and just select track first. And that's gonna give us a blue arc right there. So track, we gotta think about track as if there was a laser beam sticking out of the shaft, where is that pointing on the ground? So that laser beam is gonna shoot out of the putter shaft, wherever that's pretty much tracking on the ground is our image on the screen. If I go ahead and click path and I remove track, that's a 3D representation of the putting stroke projected on a 2D image onto the ground. So Track is, you can think about what the shaft is doing. Path, you can think about what the sweet spot is doing. On the bottom left here, there's a 3D option, which will give us different views. So if I just wanted to see something looking straight down from the top, top left corner, if I wanted to see something from more of a worm view, top right, if I want to see something from putter level or lateral, that would be on the bottom left. And then the 3D motion is on the bottom right. And the 3D motion, you can go ahead and click on it and zoom around. Just let me get back into there. Peter might be going a little slow with programs running, but you can spin that 3D around if you want to go ahead and show students how the putter's moving, where it's not in a straight back and straight through motion. There's also an option here to change the visuals. If I want to add more angles of the face relative to the path, I can also take them off. And then now the face lines disappeared. So a lot of good visual options here for you and the student. Next one is our arc. This is going to be how the putter travels relative to the ground in an up and down manner into the golf ball and through. The low point is gonna be in the pink. So where that putter reaches the lowest part in its motion, it's gonna give us that pink reference mark. If I click through on some different putts, you can see that one's well ahead. 
that one is pretty neutral. This one you can see the putter moved a little bit smoother up and back, down and into impact, and then up through to the other side. If I click back to number two, you can see this putter head actually moved relatively level and even a little bit lower through the golf ball. So some good images here for yourself and students. And again, up at the top, give us our inversion, our impact, and our change numbers. Our next tile is gonna give us face to path graph, as well as shaft to arc. So relative to the 3D pendulum motion, how the face moved relative to the path and how that moved relative to the shaft. 3D motion. This little tile gives us a lot of great visuals for players and students alike from all different directions. And I have some slides that will cover more of what this shows, but there's a lot of options here to turn off and turn on options to show what you wanna to show to your student. Launch tile, that's gonna give us, based on what we put in for our capital unit, how the golf ball is gonna launch relative to the face angle change, relative to dynamic loft, how that changed through the strike and the launch height. And it gives us an estimated ball speed. Energy balance, did we hit it on the toe? Did we hit it on the heel? If we look at the torque, that's gonna give us on this one, minus 4.4%. And it says right below that, that it was on the toe. So it gives us exactly where it was hit relative to the sweet spot. The top and back gives us dynamic loft, the side spin, how the putter is working through. So a good little way to see how are you losing energy? Is that putter head working too much across the golf ball? and deflecting the golf ball, or is it running into the golf ball and letting the ball take the club speed? So here's the sweet spot rotation tile. If we click through how the sweet spots work in the backswing, the sweet spots opening, how fast it's moving, it's starting to come into impact. And then in this circle right here, at impact, it's gonna give us, what do we do at the strike? So there's our 4.4% on the toe. If I click to the next one, there is 2.2% on the heel. So it gives us where that was in relationship to the strike. So the student can match their feels or as a coach, you can kind of start help giving them some awareness of where that putter ran into the golf ball. Sweet spot rail. So this tile gives us how did the player move the bottom of the putter head and the top of the grip in the stroke from above, face on. So you see the arrows in this one are moving a little bit closer to the toes and the body. So the putter head was moving a little bit inwards in the backstroke. And then also the up and down direction of how that putter is swinging. So the putter rail, good little visual of how that's moving relative to our zero line, which is more of a robot moving the putter. But remember, everyone's a unique individual and they all move the putter differently. Handling on here is how much the putter is twisting through the stroke. The orange lines is not much twist. Um, don't know if I made any strokes. There's one right there where we start seeing the red, but it's gonna be a little more severe. Uh, is that the yips? Is that the player trying to control the face? How are they moving that? Is it relatively neutral? Trembling. This again is gonna be how the player is moving the putter back and forth and in and out of plane. And here's the direction of the hands acceleration, how the hands move the putter head down below. 
and there's some slides I'll walk through this, what it can show. I'm just gonna click through the top. I'm just trying to get through the tiles just so everyone can see everything that's offered with the Capto unit. Kind of going a little quickly here, but we'll have some question and answer at the end. Here's the sweet spot speed. So the bottom of the putter head, how is that moving in the stroke? So it's going minus away from the target line. It's starting to slow down at the inversion. So now we're back to zero miles an hour. Then it's gonna start going positive. So now it's accelerating towards the golf ball. And here at impact is the little dot followed by what happened afterwards. The purple line is gonna be our low point and the orange is our current as well. So it gives us a little view of what's going on through the putting stroke. Is that putter hitting maximum speed around impact or is it gonna be speeding up through the golf ball? So if I click through a couple of these little images, some different putts here. They can see how everyone looks unique to the putt. Now, if there was someone that was really accelerating on the way through, you would see a little spike so that the speed would continue to continue to ramp up through that little dot at impact. Here's the sweet spot acceleration. So on this graph, you can see that the graphs are off the chart. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the little pencil value and I'm gonna change this to 30. Click accept. You can see now it's shrunk the graph down to get all the curves there. Here's our handle speed. So it's measuring, factoring the putter head speed and the handle speed. And then here is back to our acceleration tile. I'm gonna go to the next one, our tempo, how the player moved back and through. So it gives us our ideal is 0.76 and our downstroke 0.38. And it gives us our current, how that player moved the putter underneath that. Different modes here where we can have more of an advanced view. There's our putter from above. And back to our basic views. And then we can go ahead and change whatever we want here. If we want our tempos to be a little bit slower, a little bit backwards, there's a metronome you could use. And there's also a wave sound where you can go ahead and play it for the player and let them putt along. And that gets us back to our main screen. Just a quick overview of what all the tiles show. If we click custom, we can go ahead and choose unique tiles that we want to use for that session. If we just want to use, say, our arc, face, track, and loft, we can go ahead and use those numbers. And it's going to put them up in our screen right here. So let me accept. So if we don't want to see the whole lab view, we can go ahead and select the tiles that we want to see. The value tiles. Got to think about this a little bit more kind of like track man numbers. What numbers do we want to put on our screen? Go ahead and click confirm and it's going to give us a bigger view of our numbers. There's also options green. So if I was live right now, it'd give me live numbers of what's going on with our shaft, our lie. So you could see the numbers change in real time. Target, if we want to set a target, we can do that. Practice, protocol, and live. So there's other options as opposed to just their live. And on the very bottom, recently added, there's actually a way of capturing the video. So once you click that, once you're live, everything's rolling. It's going to bring up the video screen. And when you go ahead and let that roll, it's gonna save the video so you can have that stroke tied to the numbers that just popped up. Last one down 
the bottom right are three dots will get us into our options where we can select different pots. We can go ahead and click and see our averages. This will give us our averages of the three putts. We can see the standard deviation of the three putts that were selected. So it gives us options to go through that. And then I'm just gonna jump back to our presentation here. But that's just a quick little run through of what the system has. I just wanna cover a couple of the tiles that a lot of people have the most questions on. First one is the direction hands acceleration. As we look here at the top left, what you'll see is right underneath it says slow to fast. So the wave is going quickly down below the green ideal curve. And then as it starts to go up positive towards our zero line, it hits our zero and then it starts to slow down on the right side. The neutral in the middle, that's something where the putter's moving smoothly back and smoothly through in a pendulum motion, as opposed to being manipulated too slow or too fast, trying to control the speed. And on the top right one, the slow to fast, you can see that the wave underneath it is very, smooth and slow for a long time. And there's a quick abrupt jump above the zero line into impact. Impact is the far right orange line at the end of the tile. And the inversion, that's where that putter head becomes stopped. But you can see that the graph ramps upwards because the player needs to apply some acceleration towards the target to slow the putter down. So it can start going back into impact. The 3D motion tile overview measures a few inches before and after impact, gives us our shaft plane, our putt plane, and our sweet spot plane. What we see here is the shaft plane. What plane is the shaft working on? It also gives us our shaft kernel and our shaft surface, as well as the radius. So if we look on the bottom right, image that's tucked underneath there. You can see there's a circle with a highlighted, almost like a pizza wedge in there. That's the edge that that putt moved on through the stroke. The putt plane, this is the whole putter and calculated from three dimensions that the putter moves in. So the rotation of the face, the shaft, twisting and also in the plane as that putter head's releasing and passing the grip. Oops, click back. And one moment here, looks like I got a pan on. Oops, don't know how, sorry for that first time in the webinar and thanks for your patience. But as we look at the putt plane of the whole putter, like I mentioned, it's the axis of rotation. The more the putter rotates, that axis is gonna lay down flatter. The sweet spot plane, as we look at this, that's the theoretical plane related to the sweet spot trajectory. This plane is an interpolation of the positions of those points on the trajectory of the putter through impact. That's the displacement of the sweet spot. So what you can see here, the top left image, that's gonna be a neutral normal stroke. The right image, that's a straight back, straight through trying to keep the face square to the target line. And the bottom middle one, that one is going to be major rotation, which flattens that plane down to the ground. As we click at, the shaft and putter path, it gives us a visual to show a player or yourself how that putter moved, the top of the grip and the sweet spot. Also gives us what the player did relative to an ideal motion. And here is a little chat about the kernels, the shaft kernel and the putt plane kernel. They change 
in rotation through impact. The sizes are of the putt plane through impact is relationship of how that putter moved and how much rotation there was. So here you can see two different kernels. The normal stroke has a small green kernel and the straight back straight through trying to keep the face square. There's a lot of manipulation in there twisting the face back and through. So that had a bigger circle in it. And then on the left, I just put that in there. It's a good visual of an anchor of how that putter is swinging in the motion, just so you could show students how the putter actually works. So here's a quick look at normal stroke. You can see that the yellow is the shaft plane line, the green, not much rotation in this stroke, and the red sweet spot plane. If I click on the next one, trying to keep the face square to the target, the putter path, I was trying to keep it straight back, straight through, and keep the face square to the target. You can see how the green and the red flipped to the right side of the yellow shaft plane line because that putter head is trying to be controlled through the stroke. The face tile, you can see right there, there's less motion of the face because again, manipulating it, trying to keep the face back and through. So it's always good to know what the student's trying to do with their stroke. So here's a normal stroke with a lot of rotation. You can see that the green putt plane has gone lower because now there's more rotation of the face, more rotation of the shaft and in plane. If we look at the handle low, what I did is I just kind of stood back, put the toe up in the air and made a stroke around my body. You can see how that lowered the green plane and the red plane because I added more rotation to the putter. Here's the straight back straight through. You can see that the green putt plane kernel again grew a lot bigger. The red is actually on the outside of the target line, trying to keep that face straight back, straight through, keeping the face closed in the back swing, opening it on the way through. You can see how the face tile relative to the ideal, it's a lot flatter compared to letting that swing on an arc. Here's straight back, straight through with the putter shaft, but letting the putter head swing. So it's always great just to throw the capto unit on, take some swings, see how that changes. If you have any questions, we're always here for you. And then I just wanna give a couple tiles of how you could use the capto when you're coaching. Some ideas that I do, got some of this from David Orr, where I run five balls straight up a hill, could be a six footer, could be a 10 footer, see what the data looks like and then move them from a right to left and a left to right, hit five more golf balls so that we can compare and see how the strokes move on different surfaces. Are they making similar strokes? How are the strokes changing relative to your environment? You could do this up a slope, seeing if they're de-lofting the shaft too much relative to the slope that they're putting through. You can do speed work, um, how far the putter's traveling, the acceleration the player is putting into it, and are they having too much shaft lean, not enough shaft lean? Are they hitting that golf ball into the ground or are they going to launch that golf ball too high into the sky? And then you can also take this on the course. So it's portable, you don't need to be confined to a building. You can turn it on, give it to the player, let them hit some shots under pressure, see how they're doing in the environment. When there's something on the line, you might give them a little bet, see if you can give them some pressure, see how that changes relative to the putting green. And then putter fitting, how the length, designs, weight, all that affects the stroke, how it affects the graphs and affects your players. And a good quote from David Orr, if you don't have the skills you need, you better become a robot. And then putter fitting. Some guys are using this for putter fitting. 
here is T squared golf. Get a little travel case on the bottom is ping. If you have the capabilities of having full units already set up, you can go ahead and grab different putter heads, putter styles, weights, head designs. How does that affect how the player lines up the putter? Is it face balance, toe hang? A toe hang putter in transition might lag a little bit and keep the toe a little bit more open through the stroke where a face balance might let them release a little bit easier. The moment of inertia, they want something that comes off faster or slower. Changing the length of the putter, how does that change any of the data? And then head weights, grips, shaft weights, how does all that affect how the player moves the putter? Does a heavier putter make it harder for the player to move? Is a lighter putter too easy for the player to move? So there's many options here using the capital unit. However, you can best use it to fit your coaching style. Are you doing more putter fittings? Are you doing more coaching? Are you doing it in the outdoors? Are you doing it indoors? The unit will work anywhere you have connection to your unit, your iPad, your computer, and as long as that unit is charged. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through a little Q&A. Let me go ahead and stop my sharing. And can everyone see me? Perfect. Any questions? I know I kind of scanned through that pretty quickly. Just a quick overview of what's going on. Um, this will probably be recorded and put up on the CAPTA site. Also cut some of it out, upload it slowly through the Instagram portal and take some of this quick walkthrough, make it more digestible, easier to see. There's also level one and level two online training platform. So you can go through slowly of each tile of what they're showing, what's actually in there, how it's calculated. There's also a good little family throughout the US and the world of coaches using the capital unit. So you can always reach out if you have a question. Uh, let me see on the side here. If you have any questions, go ahead and pop on in. Looks like Kyle has a question in the chat. Can you go back to impact with crosshairs? Can you show? Perfect. Turn back on the CAPTO unit here or the program. Brian, while you're going there, can you uh, describe how you use the camera? Because when you have the, when you use the, when you turn it on and you go to use the camera, you're getting the computer looking at you and you need it to be on the person that is putting it. Can you use a, a, uh, an, an, much like another, you know, the internet camera that is portable or how, how would you connect it so that you can actually see the putter? Yeah. To see the actual putter, once you log in, capture the unit. So you can see right there, I'm on the screen. So that's the front side of my computer. Now, if I was on an iPad, on the top left here on the camera with the circles, I can click that and that would go to the front camera. I could also flip the camera up and down and I can also flip it left to right or 90 degrees. So if you're logged in and you see the video and you just see yourself, that's the front camera. So you wanna go ahead and click the top camera and now I'll flip to the back. Does that make sense? Well, that, I understand that if you're using the iPad, but what if you're using the computer? Do you... That is a great question. I will reach out to our Capto headquarters and see if they have an option for an additional camera. I'll make a note on that one. Because it would, you know, the the internet camera, these the things you're looking at through me other than on the computer. If you could, 
somehow see that as it's plugged in and you can put it off to the side it would work phenomenal i believe yeah, if you had like a you know, studio have some, they have some really high yeah. def they have some really high def versions of these of these cameras now so correct and i know this just came out within the last month so a lot of coaches are just finding the capabilities of it and how it works but again the portability of just having your ipad in hand you can walk out onto the putting green anywhere on the golf course take a video you don't have to worry about having a camera set up so i will reach out to them and try to get some answers back to you but that's a good question always trying to take all the feedback and improve as well so with kyle's question on the crosshairs so i think he's talking about this little view right here with the golf ball so that's actually a golf ball dimple pattern right there where the green dot is at if i click through some different putts here you can see that that dot's moving around relative to how the putter moved so if i go to this one where the green moved up to that upper left quadrant and that face is open 2.4 degrees and I can click back into how the player moved the putter. Well, here you could see the putter head, the blue line actually went below the zero. So that putter was closing in the backstroke, trying to keep it looking at the target. Then on the way through, they're trying to reverse that out. And I just reversed it out too much. So I opened it 2.4 degrees relative to where the putter started. And if I close that, click on our notes right here. That one was me trying to go straight back, straight through, and keep the face pointing at the target. So the face, how the face is coming into the impact, if it's more open, it's going to hit on the left side of the crosshair. If it's more closed, it's going to hit on the right side. So you can see that one's closed 0.5 degrees relative to that one the shaft the dynamic loft the more loft i have that's going to move it below the crosshair and the less loft i have so there i returned minus 3.4 degrees of loft that's going to move up the impact point on the golf ball so you have to remember all this is relative to the zero mark where that putter started so if they aimed way left or way right that could affect where that little green dot goes, but it's a good visual how that putter was moving into the golf ball. So Kyle, hopefully that answers your question. And any additional questions that we have? Um, Brian, it's Peter Brown. Um, Oh, hey. I was wondering about the stability of the program on the iPad and on the iPhone. Uh, does it seem like it's gotten better uh, with this new update? Because I know in the past I've done lessons with Capto and it all of a sudden will just shut down the program. Do you see an improvement there? Um, I have. Um, I have an old, I don't have it with me, but I have an old iPad mini from I want to say five years ago that I run a lot of it off of out in the coaching environment. I just got a new iPad to run it on, but I still run a lot on the old iPad. So every now and then it does shut down and restart, but it's so easy to get back into, to get back to where you were. And then that last stroke, whatever stroke was hit, well, it's already saved. So we're ready to go, right? So once you jump back in there, now you're, back to almost where you left off of, if that makes sense. So if there's any issues, like I mentioned, go ahead and send us an email, send me a note on Kempto Instagram, any of that, and we'll pass it on and get the answers to you. Or if there's a bug, you know, we're always sending some data. They're always trying to make it easier and easier to use, especially for our coaches. Does that make sense? Perfect. Any additional questions in here?